with your people after it's been so long to worship you, to lift up your mighty name. We don't want anything else but to be in your presence. So from the very outset, Father, we lift you up. We give you the praise and the glory and the honour that you are so deserving of, Lord. Thank you for bringing us back together. Thank you for your hand of blessing. Thank you for healing. Thank you for your protection. Father, we ask that you come in Jesus' name.
Let's pray. Psalm 84 says how good it is. It says it's better to be one day in your courts than a thousand days anywhere else. Father, we thank you that right now we're standing in your presence. In your word it says where two or more agree, where you are there in the midst of them. And so, Father, we know you're here right now, walking alongside of us, that if we put our faith in you, we are in you and you are in us. You surround us, your, each breath that we take. We thank you for that, God. We thank you for the security we find in you. We thank you for the love we find in you. We thank you for the forgiveness we find in you, the hope, the joy, the peace in this crazy year 2020. God, we love you. We love you. We thank you for the privilege to be back here together, shoulder to shoulder with our brothers and sisters, our spiritual fathers, mothers, our kids in your house and we just pray God before anything else we want to lift you up and we just pray that our worship would bring you glory this morning we thank you you're a good God you're a good God we thank you for your goodness in Jesus mighty name Amen Amen how good is it to be back here so good so good. Would you like to take your seats, guys? It is amazing to see all of your faces. It's been so long that we've not been gathering together. It's been a long time. It has been a long time. My name's Holly, and this is my husband, Mark. Good morning. And we are so pleased that you are all here today. We've got a few announcements. Guess what, guys? It's the church's birthday coming up. Woo! And this number might seem big to some or little to others, but it's the 30th birthday Come of on. our church, which is really cool. I think it's a very young church. You all personally. get to be 30 again. Yes. So good. So on the 2nd of August, we are celebrating with Danny Guglamucci and it's Sunday Woo. fun day as well. So it's going to be an amazing day. So I know that there's a lot of spots here that people are still probably watching from their homes as we get used to coming back together again, but make sure you put down in your diaries the 2nd of August to be here to celebrate together. It's going to be good. Uh, we've got a men's breakfast coming up. Mm-hmm. It's going to be bright and early as the sun comes up at 10.30am. <laughs> no, it's not at 10.30, it's 8am. So uh, get, get your uh, warm woolies on, uh, scarves, beanies, and it's going to be at... Swanport Wetlands at 8 a.m. So it's not next Saturday, it's the one after, which is the 25th. So if you're a man, if you're not sure, I'll talk to you afterwards and we can work it out. But if you're a man or you think you could be, you're welcome to come next Saturday, not the one after. All right, guys, Liberté Lunch is back on today. So I think they've got pizza and all sorts of goodies out there. Dim Sims, chips, hang around. Get some goodness into your bellies after the service. But don't hang around in the foyer because of numbers. We have to kind of spread out. So pray that even though the rain is great, there will be a little less so you can eat outside and do that too. All right. Excellent. We're (laughs) going to invite up Pastor Belle. She's going to share about our giving this morning. Thank you, Belle. 
Thanks, Mark. Welcome back home, everyone. Isn't it beautiful to be back home, hey? And see all your beautiful faces. And there were babes that left and they've come back with teeth. I cannot believe it. And they can run around. I just do not know where the time has gone. Lots of people ask how, how long until we can come back. Well, it was 16 weeks. We know that now in hindsight, hey? And uh, Josh and I just want to um, say how much we love and appreciate you so much. You know, um, during this time, um, what I've realized is just how much I need Jesus. You know, and I think the most beautiful place to be in is that understanding that we need Jesus. And not just for that once-off decision, but every single day. You know, the world has wants and the world has needs. We have wants and we have needs, but we all need Jesus. And we need to be at that place where we, we recognize our need for Jesus. And, um, you know, I don't know about you, but a few people I know can just veer off course when we, we don't have him in our lives every single day. And for me, I veer towards the plants. I veer towards the bathers, you know. Like, I think I almost bought another pair of bathers yesterday, but it's not a need, it was a want. And, uh, you know, through this time, we could have veered towards maybe a bit of selfishness, a bit of um, insecurity, a bit of fear. We've all been veered, but just to be realigned back to needing Jesus and knowing our need for Him is just beautiful. And I think offering is a time that we go, yeah, this is my offering because I need Him. I have all these other wants, but I don't need need these things. I I need Jesus. And the world needs Jesus. We're like toddlers that we don't know what we want sometimes. Like when I was young, I always wanted to be up with the big kids and not in bed. But my mum would be like, no, you temper tantrum girl, you need sleep. So, so we would need sleep. But, you know, Josh and I, over this time, we've realised how much that it's, this church isn't just based on one pastor and eight staff. We've needed you guys. And we've appreciated our 35 hosts that have done pop-up church and, you know, the thousands of texts. And I've done a bit of a calculation and just the, the love that has been poured into this place over the last 16 weeks. You know, the 17 services that, that Declan and Tash and Peter have, have filmed and edited. We want to thank you guys. We want to thank you for the the 35 hosts for the seven sessions of worship that has been poured into our homes, for the 14 episodes of Life Women, for the 1,120 packs and visits to our Life Kids on Friday. That is phenomenal. To our Life Kids Sunday team, their creativity when they um, have been filming their 16 episodes and they've done 688 packs to 27 different households over this time. Our preschoolers had, have had 480 packs. Um, you know, Matt Long and, and Mark uh, burning these DVDs and um, Josh and I are doing drops to 30 different households. That could take for six hours because you guys can talk. We love you. Um, but, you know, and then where there was a need and there's wants in our community, but the needs were that, you know, people were losing jobs and they were needing food. And during this time, we've been able to deliver 560 food packs to those that have lost jobs or in need. And so guys, I just want to give you guys a, a round of applause. You guys are amazing. And we just want to thank you for your love, for your care, for your texts, for everything you do, because we need Jesus and we need the world to know that they need him too because they need to meet the, the man who is personified faith that is dripping with love, that needs the, the dialogue of that there's purpose and hope in this world and, you know, our world needs Jesus, right? So let's continue. And this, this offering that you're about to give, whether electronically or um, with your money, we just want to thank you for it because it is reaching people that they don't even know that they need him, but they do. So let's pray over it. In Jesus' name, Father, we just wanna dedicate this offering to you. We wanna put you first. We wanna put you first above our wants because we need you. We need you and we love you. And God, I just pray, Father, that this money transfers to, to dialogue with you, with 
the exchange of, of forgiveness and the exchange of love that you want to pour out into your precious people for your, your grace and your mercy to flow farther because what our world needs isn't 60 rolls of toilet paper, they need you. So we wanna just thank you, Father, for being with us during this time, for veering us back to where we just need you. And we just wanna thank you for what you're doing in us and in our community, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, stewards. Thank you, Bill. Wow, amazing stuff. We're gonna worship, would you... Uh... Stay seated or they stand up? I don't know. It's been so long. You can long. sit down for a little bit while we're taking up the offering and I'll direct you when we're about to worship. Thank you, Jesus. Just sing that again. 
not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, try to awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, try to Father, we thank you that not only do we get to meet each other again, that we get to meet family and friends back in this place, but that we get to meet and encounter the Lord Jesus Christ, the risen one, the holy one, the righteous one. Father, we're just so in awe that we get to be back in this building back in your presence but Father we also thank you that it says and it promises in your word that you never leave us and you never forsake us we thank you that you've brought us through one of the hardest times maybe in the economy and different people's lives but Lord you are faithful you are righteous you are just and we thank you that you didn't leave us you didn't forsake us that you brought us back here to worship you again together today father speak to us now as we gather around your word in jesus wonderful name we pray amen amen you may be seated thank you worship team Well, it is so good to be back, so good to be preaching to wonderful smiley faces instead of a a camera lens. We're still preaching to the camera lens, so hello to all the people watching online still, and uh, we look forward to the day when we can all be back uh, in one service, all back together again. But for now, we've got our two services uh, at 10 and, uh, and 2. Um, but yeah, it's great to be back together again. And um, I think really it's important for us as Christians to celebrate the fact that we get to be back together because I think that the Bible, the greatest story ever told, but not only the greatest story ever told, it's also it's, it's our story, the story of creation and the fall and then redemption is really all a story about proximity. It's all about God actually trying and wanting to be close to his people. And so his church is all about the, the people of God coming together and getting close to one another as we worship. So I'm sure like it has been for me that, that for some of you, it's been like that there's been something missing. Even though we've had 
you know, the online worship, even though we've had, you know, the word preached and all that kind of stuff. There's, there's something about proximity. There's something about being in God's house with God's, with God's people. And uh, 18 and a half years ago, uh, my wife walked into this room uh, as a single lady and uh, she walked out a married lady. But also she walked into this very room with a veil over her face. But then once she made her way down that aisle and made her way to me, I then removed that veil to, to signify the fact that as we were getting married, that there would be a, a closeness, that, that, that veil of separation had been removed. And I think that for us, that's almost what today is like for us as a church, that some of those restrictions, some of those isolating restrictions have been removed and we get to be back together, that as a church, we are actually called to be the bride of Christ and that there, uh, that there should be a, a level of closeness and intimacy, not only between us and God, but also with each other. So it's so great to be back. And uh, as I said in the message last week, for those that were watching that uh, online, that the church is uh, more than a building, it's more than a business, it's more than just a social organization. The church is all about people. And so while the, the core essence of why we exist as a church hasn't changed over the past four months, a lot has happened in the lives of the people of this church. So some of those things were good, some not so good. I know that there are several uh, people here this morning that are actually here with broken bones. We've got Roger is here with broken bones. We've got uh, Jeanette with, here with broken bones. We've got uh, Carol here with, with broken bones. There's many that have lost loved ones over this time. Many have had visits to the hospital. Some lost jobs. Others have gained new jobs, including uh, people from this church occupying four new chaplaincy roles in schools. You probably noticed uh, a new good thing that's happened is that Aaron Schmidt has, uh, or is in the process, we've not quite finished yet, but of building this brand new stage area, which is really, really great. And um, we've also ordered a, uh, a new screen that's going to go on the back wall. So if you're thinking that we're a little bit squished at the moment, we kind of, we kind of are, but very soon we'll have a, a screen on that back wall, and so we'll gain some of that that room back as we make room for more, uh, more people. But I was trying to add up uh, different people that have had milestone birthdays. So Peter turned 18, JP turned 21, Bianca turned 30, uh, Jody and Melissa turned 40, uh, Krista turned 50. Anyone else with milestone birthdays in this time? 75? Going once, going twice. Any advances on 75? Any other birthdays? No? Denisha got her driver's license. Shannon and Timothy announced that they were having a baby. Where are they? I saw that. Yeah. Um, as did Jenny and Michael Pallon. Uh, Danielle and Mitchell were ordained as pastors by mail. So we'll have to have a celebration for them at some stage. Uh, Tash and Brock started dating. And then somehow two weeks later, now Tash isn't actually here because she's got glandular fever, kissing disease. <laughs> Coincidence, Brock. Brock leaves the room. It's supposed to be social distancing, Brock. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jeremy and Tegan got engaged. Which is really exciting. These guys here got married. Congratulations to you guys. So that's really, really exciting. So that's just to name a few amazing things that have happened in the, in the lives of people. Uh, but for me, uh, I'll share with you one good thing and one bad thing that um, happened to me. First of all, the good thing 
was that, yeah, as kind of Belinda has already shared, I have just been overwhelmed by the generosity and the support from you all. Honestly, right at the very start of uh, this lockdown time, I called a, a board meeting with my board and I said, um, I'm, I made a plan and I said, I'm going to fire myself. Now, that didn't mean that I was going to stop actually doing my job, but I said, I'm going to stop paying myself because, you know, there was all this talk of this economic downturn and I didn't want the church to suffer or have to uh, forego anything or any of the programs that, that we do and that we give to the community. And so I'd made this plan because I thought, well, we're not going to have the money to, to pay everyone, so I'll, I'll just stop paying myself, so I'm going to fire myself. But the board said, no, they had, uh, had faith in God and they had faith uh, in you. And uh, so you'll be happy to know that I did keep my job. And uh, yeah, so, but not only that, we were not only able to um, keep the church running and, and functioning, but as I said, we've been able to, to pay for uh, this stage along with lots of volunteer hours uh, put in for that. We've paid for half of the screen that's going to be coming. And um, even though... Uh, Liberté Cafe hasn't been uh, running over the past uh, 16, 17 weeks. We've still been supporting our school in Cambodia. Um, of course, they also had to shut for a period of time. And so just like what we did, even though we had to shut our, our doors, we wanted to continue to give to the community. And so as Belinda said, we started up a, a, a food uh, delivery um, service, I guess, for the people of our community. And um, so also uh, the school in Cambodia did the same thing. So we've been feeding sort of, yeah, 40 families or so every week. Um, and because we kept sending the money over, the school couldn't operate, just like we couldn't operate as a church, but we could still do all our social and community outreaches and, and the different things that we were doing. And it was the same there. So the, the school couldn't operate as a school, but the school kids have actually been involved with a feeding program. Um, so they use the money that normally goes uh, into the running costs of the school, and they've been feeding um, 100 people every week with the money that we've been able to continue to send over as part of our commitment that we give uh, to Cambodia. So I just think it's amazing. Oh, and also, we are, I think... I checked this morning, I think we're something like $46 away from cracking the $50,000 mark for our school, uh, which is really, really exciting too. So, um, yeah, so I think that that's amazing that uh, in one of the worst economic downturns in history that we didn't actually shrink back, but that we actually went forward and uh, we're able to advance financially. So I was just blown away uh, by that, that your generosity exceeded my faith and uh, God's faithfulness. Uh, you know, I just want to thank God for his faithfulness to build his church as he said that he would. The bad thing that happened was I broke my phone. Very, very sad. So I was, I was outside doing some, doing some gardening, doing some yard work, listening to a, a, an, a, a, a podcast. And uh, I still like to think that I'm young enough and, and uh, nimble enough to not need a, uh, a cover for my phone. And uh, so I pulled my phone out of my pocket too quickly and it flew out of my hands and was about to drop to the ground. And I was kind of quick enough. The problem was I, I was actually too quick because I got my foot underneath it, but I got my foot underneath it so fast that I actually kicked my phone into the shovel that I was using and it cracked. So that was a bit sad, but you don't have to feel too bad because uh, I have a phone plan and so I'll get a new phone come October when the new one is out. And so today we are in part two of our Church Reimagined series, the Church Renewed. And as amazing as this new stage is and amazing as, you know, the, the painted fence and shed and the... Uh, the new um, fencing area that's coming and the new screen that's, that's coming. 
as amazing as all of those things are, it's not about an external renewal, but an internal renewal that Jesus died to give each and every one of us. So we live in a day and a time where people are often more concerned with what is new than what is true. People don't really seek out what is true. They don't want to watch or study what is true or what is going to build them up. They just want whatever is new. So my phone being two years old and now with a cracked screen on the outside, even though it still works, even though it's you know, more powerful than the computers in you know, the rocket ship that sent people to the moon, if that really happened, uh, <laughs> people don't want that phone anymore because it's not new, it's not the, the latest thing. I was having uh, lunch with, with Grant yesterday for his, his birthday and he would say, oh, I just, I can't wait until I get the iPhone 12. And they said, what, why, why, what does the iPhone 12 have that your phone doesn't have currently? And he said, I don't know, they haven't even made it yet, but I just want it because it's new. And I think all of us are like that. We want the newest, we want the upgrade, we want something that's bigger, faster, sleeker, we want the new and not the old. But then in contrast to this, Jesus says to us in, in, in Hebrews 13 verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same? The same is boring, isn't it? We don't want the same. We don't want consistent. We want what is new. But what if there was something or what if there was someone that was actually so good right from the beginning? What if there was something or someone that didn't need an update or an upgrade every few weeks? That in actual fact, their character and their nature was actually the very best that it could be right from the beginning. That God was the greatest he could be 6,000 years ago and he will be the greatest, most loving, most grace-filled creature in all of creation. Not that he's part of creation. So that if there was any change, if there was anything new in God, it would actually have to be a, a downgrade because he is already the best that he could be. So anything new would be worse. So for him, we don't actually want something new from him. We actually want him and need him to be consistent. So whilst we as a society only tend to celebrate the new, we as a renewed church need desperately to celebrate God's constant and unfailing love for us, as well as provide a constant unfailing love for the people of our community. That's what a renewed church is actually all about, about providing a people, a place to come and meet the one who doesn't need an upgrade, who, who doesn't need an update, who already was before the beginning of time and will be forever the best of the best. But for me though, I personally am not always at my best. There's been times in this you know, shut down time where I've actually been my worst, where I've said things and done things that have placed guilt and shame onto people which is opposed to what God design was that he came to take guilt and shame off of people. 
And so for me, I need Jesus. I need to be renewed in myself. And we as a church need that renewal in ourselves too. So if you've had days like me where you haven't been at your best, well, take heart because that doesn't discount us from God's presence and it doesn't disqualify us from God's purpose in our lives. Rather, it qualifies us for needing, desperately needing His grace-filled, His life-changing, hope-delivering, lavish, lab-giving newness and presence in our lives. You see, Jesus didn't come to just make our bad days a little bit better. He didn't even come to make us a little bit better. He actually came to make us new. He came to bring dead things to life. Colossians 3 verses 9 and 10 says, You have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. Each and every one of us need to be renewed in and through Christ. And not just on the day of our salvation, but each and every day. 2 Corinthians 4.16 says, so no wonder we don't give up. And you might have thought, but I kind of felt like giving up. There were days in the lockdown where I was this close to giving up. Yes, but you didn't and you're still here now. So no wonder we don't give up. For even though our outer person gradually wears out, even though our phone case might crack and different things might happen, our inner being is renewed every single day. It wasn't a one-off event for you on the the day of your salvation. Our inner being needs that renewal every single day. But do you notice with both of those passages, it it used the language of, uh, you know, putting on, putting off, wearing out, a bit like an article of clothing, a bit like a jacket maybe. Now, many of you probably know that I don't necessarily have a lot of style. But I don't know what goes with what, that this outfit that I'm wearing this morning, whether you like it or not, I didn't even pick out myself. Belinda picked out for me last night because I have no idea what goes with what. But when it does come to clothing, I just think it needs to do the function that it was designed to do. So with a jacket, when I'm looking for a jacket, it needs to be warm and it needs to be unrestrictive to what I want to do. Now, over this time of isolation, it's meant that we've had a bit more time uh, to to do things, which unfortunately, another bad thing that has happened has meant that we've had more time to shop. I hate shopping. And so Belinda has been... Had, had a goal or a mission of her life to, to try to buy me a denim jacket. So every time that we would go out anywhere, any time that we would go anywhere, we would, uh, she would want to go into a clothing store and she would get out a, a, uh, a denim jacket from the shelf and she would get me to try it on. But every one that I tried on, it just didn't feel right. Do you know what I mean? Like when you get something, it kind of looked good on the rack, but when you put it on, It just didn't feel right. Now, she said that it looked good and she just wanted me to buy it anyway. But I refuse to buy something brand new that is going to be restrictive of me and what I want to do. But sadly, that is the way that many of us live our lives. That we allow things to be placed upon us that we think is going to look good to the people around and about us, but in actual fact is restricting us and restricting us from the calling and the purpose that we were designed to do. And so God is saying to us in and through these passages of Scripture that there are certain things that just don't fit. That when it comes to guilt and shame and condemnation, 
they just don't fit. You were never meant to wear those. As part of God's creation, you were never meant to wear those things. That passage in Colossians that we have been reading from has a, has a big list of things that again may look appealing on the rack, but we're never, we were never meant to wear. So we're going to read those things in verses 5 and 8. So things like sexual immorality, moral corruption, lust, evil desire and greed, anger, rage, malice, slander and obscene language. We need to take these things off. These are that ill-fitting evil denim jacket. And we need the newness in Christ. We need the new tailor-made jacket that he has for us. And again, it tells us that what in, in uh, this verse in Colossians 3, it tells us what we as a church, a renewed church, should look like and what we should be wearing. So we're going to read in verse 12. It says, You are always and dearly loved by God. So robe yourselves with virtues of God, since you have been divinely chosen to be holy. Be merciful and endeavor to understand others. Be compassionate. Show kindness towards all. Be gentle and humble. Unoffendable in your patience with others. Unoffendable. That that coat of offense should never find its place on your body. We should be unoffendable. Never even put it on. Tolerate the weaknesses of those in the family of faith. Forgiving one another in the same way that you have been graciously forgiven by Jesus Christ. If you find fault with someone, release the same gift of forgiveness to them. For love is supreme and must flow through each of these virtues. Love becomes the mark of true maturity. Let your heart be always guided by the peace of the anointed one who called you to the peace as part of his one body. And always be thankful. Let the word of Christ live in you richly, flooding you with all wisdom. And that is why the mission statement of this church is simply to love God and love others as we walk each step with, with Jesus. Because love should mark everything that we do. It should be our all-purpose jacket that we wear. So whilst Christ is consistent, he then calls us to not just be upgraded or updated, but made new in this way. Just as a jacket is close to the skin, and it goes with us wherever we go, whatever we are doing. The, the jacket, uh, you know, the, the form of the jacket means that wherever I go, the jacket comes along with me. So too, that the blessings and, and the favor of God, the newness of Christ should actually be what we place on and should go with us wherever we go, as we go into our week. Not just in here in this building on a Sunday, but should go with us everywhere that we go. And just like I said in the beginning, God is all about closeness. He's all about proximity and being close to us. Because whatever we are closest to, whatever we allow on our skin becomes what we are becomes the new you. Whatever jacket you put on, whatever you robe yourself with becomes the new you. There is a saying, and I feel like I kind of have to put on a bit of a, a southern country accent when I say this. There is a saying that goes, never wrestle with a pig. Because you both get dirty, but the pig likes it. And we have an enemy and he would love us 
to wrestle with him. He would love us to be covered in the dirt and the filth of, and the filth of guilt and shame. That is what he relishes in. Because he knows that whatever we allow onto our skin starts to become our identity. How you look determines how you feel. And how you feel determines your actions and your actions then determine your identity. So as soon as we get that little bit of dirt, even on the outside of us, our identity becomes that we feel dirt on the inside. We feel dirt and unclean and it becomes our identity. Whatever we let on the outside makes its way onto the inside. It becomes our identity. So what are you allowing close? What are you allowing onto your skin? If we allow fear close, if we put on that jacket of fear, the new you looks anxious. When you allow shame close, the new you looks downcast. When you allow addictions close, the new you looks bound. When you allow anger close, the new you looks unsettled. When you allow lying close, the new you looks defensive. When you allow greed and jealousy close, the new you looks selfish and alone. But I imagine a reimagined, renewed church that allows Jesus close, where the people look peaceful, empowered, invigorated, sanctified, redeemed, forgiven, and loved that this renewal does and in fact can only happen when we allow God close. In actual fact, we need to have God closer than anything else that the world could ever offer us. That's when renewal comes. So practically, practically some some things in our church are consistent and they are worth consistently celebrating. And that is what we hope to do in three weeks' time as part of our 30th birthday celebrations. But there are some things that need that newness of Christ, a, a renewed church. And so there are always changes that need to take place in and around God's house. So these are several of the new things that uh, you may notice happening around the place. So you may have been greeted today out in the car park by May, May Borman. She may have signed you or your kids in. Um, so we're changing her role slightly. She is becoming our family's pastor and in head of our connections team. Uh, Jacob Galash uh, has taken on a new role uh, for him. He's over now serving. He is now in charge of our Life Kids Junior High. Uh, Jake Toogood is uh, now overseeing both our Friday and Sunday night um, house youth teams. Uh, Tash uh, is taking on the new role as associate pastor. And we think that with some of these renewed roles and some of the new things that are happening, that that also enables some new programs to start. And one of those uh, that uh, I want to talk about uh, today just briefly is that as of next year, uh, we are going to be starting our Lifehouse Christian College. Now, we still have the ultimate dream and plan of that being starting off at least as a, as a primary school uh, in, in Gifford Hill. But for, for next year, what that means for us is that we are actually offering a diploma of leadership uh, right here as part of our, our internship uh, year here. Uh, but that diploma of leadership is available for anyone wanting to train to become a pastor, have a gap year, or just grow in their faith. So as of next year, so... Uh, that will partly be run uh, by myself, also by Tash and uh, by Mitchell and several others that will be facilitating 
that starting uh, next year. So we're making plans to have that operating. That's just some of the new things that are happening uh, as far as our church structure goes. But I also believe that God is calling individuals to renewal. And uh, particularly I felt as I was praying over this message, uh, I believe that several people are going to go through the waters of baptism to signify that renewal. And so we're making plans that as part of our birthday celebrations on the 2nd of August, I believe that several people are going to get baptized uh, and go through those cleansing, washing waters of baptism to show that Christ has uh, renewed them and brought them new life. So what is baptism all about? And why do we need this renewing in our lives? Well, I was thinking about the fact that in high school, I, I always used to play Foursquare. I used to play Foursquare in study. I used to play Foursquare in the classroom when the teacher would leave the classroom on the desks. But every recess and lunchtime, we would go out and we would play Foursquare in, uh, in the classroom sort of under the shelter shed. And Foursquare is a little bit different. Like, just about every other game, yes, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But in Foursquare, there is also this thing that happens where if the ball lands on the line, you get a replay. So this this series is all about re, re renewal, reopened, reimagined, reignited church so in Foursquare you could have this replay and a replay would happen if the ball landed on the line in between your territory and your opponent's territory and it, if, if your opponent had just delivered this amazing shot that you could never ever get back that replay option was your saving grace. It was your lifeline. That that ball landing on the line meant that you, it wasn't just replaying in super slow motion your failure. No, it meant that you got to replay and renew the entire game again. And I think that some of us need that in our life, that some of us, We've, we've kind of walked right up to the line. That there is ground, that there is territory that should always be ours, and there is ground and there is territory that the enemy has been taking back. And he's been encroaching on our territory. And so the line kind of has kept moving. And some of you through this coronavirus time have been brought right up to the line of your faith. But I'm here to say to you today, if that is you, then, then God is calling replay. That because Jesus himself put his life on the line when he died upon the cross, it means that all of us get a second chance. We get to start again. That there is a renewal process that God gives to each and every one of us that says, hey, you might have been trying to live life your way and do it your way and maybe that hasn't worked out for you and maybe you felt as though the enemy has delivered a shot that you could never get back that was going to mean certain defeat for you but because of the cross because Jesus put his body on the line all of us get an option to say replay to set a a renewal and a restart to our life and what God is calling us to but more than that Baptism also represents the fact that we have been washed clean in Christ. In the Genesis account of creation, I don't know if it's ever struck you that people were the last thing that that God created. That everything else was created, but people were the last thing. And so the first thing that he created was light, but he spoke and light came. And the same with everything else, he, he spoke. But when it came to create man, things were a little bit different because he didn't just speak from a distance. He actually came close 
and breathed. Close enough to breathe on the dust of the ground. We're going to read that in Genesis 2 as the band comes. So in Genesis 2 verse 7, it says, Then the Lord God formed, that is created, the body of man from the dust and the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being, an individual complete in body and spirit. Do you ever wonder why God used dirt? Everything else had been created. Everything else was there. He could have used anything because everything had already been made. So why dirt? There's something intrinsic, there's something significant about dirt that God wants, I believe, us to know because even the Hebrew word for man and dirt are almost identical. Adam and Adam, man and dirt. You see, if you speak to some people, they would say the easiest way to create man was just, you already have a chimpanzee, just give a chimpanzee a razor and an education and you've made man. But no, God is saying that there's something different. It's not just that we you know, share some DNA with a chimpanzee because we are more than just DNA. We are more than just a body that it said very specifically that we were then complete, not only in body, but in spirit. But still it doesn't answer the question, why dirt? Why dust? I mean, he could have, if he was going to take something from the ground, he could have taken gold or or diamond to, to show us our worth. But no, he didn't want our worth to be measured by something as insignificant to God as just gold or diamonds, that our worth and our significance should be measured by the very blood of Jesus Christ. But why dirt? There was a saying, and you might have heard me say it before, that the Hebrew people had that said, may the dust of your rabbi ever be upon you. It was a blessing that they would give to the people because back in, in, uh, in Israel in those times, of course, there were no paved roads. There were no sealed roads. And so wherever they would walk, the dust from the ground would come up. And so this saying was saying that, may you walk so closely behind your rabbi, your teacher, that wherever they walk, whatever dust flicks up from their feet, gets on to you because we all know don't we that when we walk in this world that the dust of the world comes up onto us that the things of this world come up onto us that we we haven't always been following right after Jesus that there's been times when we've wandered off and, and we've got dirt and dust on us that we've wrestled with that pig and we've got mud and we've got filth and we've got guilt and we've got shame and we don't know how to get it off So I think that right at the dawn of creation, I think the reason that that God chose the dirt was that He was saying, just as I said in the beginning, that if you let me close enough, if you let me close enough to simply breathe, to simply breathe on you. It doesn't matter if you've been covered with that dirt. It doesn't matter if you've been covered with that shame. That when you let me close enough, that just as I did in the beginning with Adam, that I breathed into the dirt and it became life, that I can breathe upon you again, covered with your dirt, covered with your guilt, covered with your shame. And when you allow me close enough to breathe upon you, I will bring a newness unlike you have ever known. That is the renewal that God wants for each and every one of us. And it is the renewal that he wants for us as a church. But it only comes as we let him close. Close enough to simply breathe and bring that new life in Christ. So would you stand? Because we're going to pray and we're going to allow the breath of heaven to breathe upon us. We're going to allow the Spirit of God 
to dwell within us. Not just close on the outside, but actually close on the inside. And whether you've come today with guilt and shame, whether you've come covered in dirt, it doesn't matter to God. Because He brought life out of the dust in the beginning and He'll bring life out of your dust that you walked in here with today. That is what God wants for you. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the new life that we have in Christ. We thank you that although each and every one of us come in today covered with the dirt of guilt and shame, that there's been times over the the past 16 weeks and over the past 16 years that we haven't always walked closely behind you. But Father, I thank you that none of that matters. That right now as we let you close, as we allow you to breathe upon us, breathe upon us with the breath of heaven, that you are going to create a new life that there's going to be a renewal that comes, whether this be our first time in church or whether we've been here for 30 years that this church has been in operation. Each and every one of us right now need God so close that He can breathe upon our dirt and bring life out of it. Father, we, we thank You that right at the end of your life, one of the last things that you did was that you washed the disciples' feet. That all the dirt from all the wrong thinking, all the wrong ways of, of doing things was washed clean in that moment. That they could walk out from that place cleansed and renewed. And whether it be through the waters of baptism in three weeks time or whether it be the washing of the Holy Spirit, the washing of Jesus' blood right now, I pray that each and every one of us will walk out of that door today knowing that each and every one of us have been washed clean and renewed in and through the finished work of Jesus. Father, we thank you that we could reimagine a renewed life in and through you. Lord, we pray that in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Let's worship. of coronavirus has allowed us to look inward and that is important as well to look at ourselves what are we doing what do we need to change but Lord we ask that you renew us right now that we turn our eyes away from ourselves and look to you our redeemer our restorer the one who has always been there, arms outstretched, love personified. We need you, renew us in Jesus' name. Not for a minute was I forsaken. Lord is in this place. Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in. Let's sing it over ourselves. Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. 
Lord, that this doesn't end as we walk through those doors. You are here for us individually throughout our week, through our coming and our going. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are what we can count on. And we are so thankful, Lord. And I pray your blessing on us as we go. 
be with us in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Well, guys, what an awesome morning it's been. It's so good to be together again. And I just, yeah, really do pray that if you felt touched by that, that you don't feel like you just have to be shoved out the doors. Our prayer team is still available. We want to we want to support you guys. We love you. We are here for you. So it might be social distancing prayers, but God can still work through that. It doesn't, doesn't matter if we can't be touching. We can be touched by the Holy Spirit no matter what. So it's been so good. So good. So next week we want to see you back here again, 10 or 2. It's going to be great. We're going to finish with a fasty pasty to go out on a high. Won't stop now. All right, thanks, guys. We start in every season. In every season, your grace has been enough. And I'm believing the best is yet to come. The cross before me, my hope on things above. And in you, Jesus, the best is yet to come. Your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door, so come now, Lord, like never before. Come on, guys. I know there's not a lot of us in here, but we can still make more noise than this, putting our hands together and declaring. I know breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. I know breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. One more time. I know breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. Your presence is an open door. Want you, Lord. 